So we'll go ahead and open the meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. <coughs> um, notice of this um, hearing was published on April 28th and May 5th. Um, we have one item on the agenda. Uh, I'm David Bloomberg, uh, members of the board joining me are Sarah Northrup and Elizabeth Silver and Maureen Scanlon as associate member and Carolyn Nish is here from the city office of planning and sustainability providing <clears throat> staff support to the board. Um, we always start by um, um, opening the meeting to public comment unrelated to the application that's on the agenda for tonight. So Carolyn, we don't see any other members of the public other than the applicant. No. Okay, so seeing none, uh, we'll go ahead to uh, the uh, hearing on the request for a finding to expand a pre-existing non-conforming setback for historic Northampton at 66 Bridge Street, Northampton, map ID 32A-176. And we'll ask the applicant or the representative of the applicant to introduce him or herself with name and address. And that would go for anyone else addressing the board. Um, and we'll hear a brief summary of the uh, application. And then the board will have a chance to ask the applicant questions about the application. And then if there's anyone from the public who would like to address the board uh, regarding the application, they will have a chance to do so after the board members ask their questions. <clears throat> and then we uh, uh, may close the public hearing and we may vote on the request for the finding uh, at the end of the hearing. Uh, so I'll ask um, if we could allow, or you already did allow the uh, applicant or the representative of the applicant to uh, speak to us. Um, and if you could start by just giving us your name and address, please. Uh, well, hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Laurie Sanders. I'm one of the two co-directors at Historic Northampton. And at the moment, I'm at 46 Bridge Street, which is one of our main, uh, just our main administrative building. So thank you all so much. I happen to be on the Zoning Board of Appeals in West Hampton, which is where I live. So um, we just had our meeting on Tuesday, but we don't have a, we don't have this uh, procedure for a finding. So I'm, I'm intrigued by, by the possibility of, of, uh, of including it. So I did prepare a short presentation. So I don't know, Carolyn, if I can share screen, but if so, uh, yeah. if that's okay with the board, uh, I'll just. Sure. Yeah. Okay, can you see that? Yes. So yes. Okay. All right, well, I, I, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with uh, our property, but we own three parcels that are our central campus, 46, which is the yellow house close to Baker's Pen and across the street from the post office, more or less. Um, 58, which is the so-called Parsons house, which was built in 1719. And then uh, 66 Bridge Street, which is the Shepherd house, which was built in 1796 and sometime in the 1800s, this building was moved to the rear location. Uh, this is the Shepherd Barn, so-called Shepherd Barn. It dates to 1805 um, uh, and we see it here for the first time. It was moved here at some point in the, in the 1800s. We're not sure exactly when, but it appears on the 1853 map. So we, it's been here a while is the point. So, um, and over the last several years, uh, uh, there's been tremendous support from the CPA funding, which has enabled us to learn lots of things about the history of the barn and, and to really come up with a, a plan for what it should be next. And so um, our, our plan includes, uh, there's some serious restoration uh, issues. The sill is basically uh, gone. So over the course of this summer, we will be um, installing a foundation, a concrete floor, and um, replacing 
uh, an L and also we hope to add this shed style addition on the rear, which is the subject of this hearing. So the, the project itself, the, the request in front of you tonight is for because where the arrow is showing, this is the a close up of the shed style addition on the rear of the, of the barn. I'll show you a kind of a plan view in a moment but um, the barn sits very close to the property line. And so it's a five foot setback in our zoning area. And um, the total square acreage uh, area, rather the total square footage that would be um, within that five foot setback is just under four and a half, uh, four and a half square feet. So, um, and it's right near a very large, uh, an eight foot wooden fence on one side and a parking lot and a chain link fence by the Bridge Street School on the other. So um, here's our three properties. Uh, 66 Bridge Street is right here. The little item in blue is an existing garden shed. Um, here's the barn as it stands now. Um, this and this is what we're proposing to do. So you see the garden shed and the original barn and we're proposing to add a larger patio and then the barn style addition on the rear, which is close to where the garden shed is. And the garden shed is going to go away and be relocated. So um, as I mentioned in the last uh, couple of years, uh, more than 600 artifacts and other items were removed from the barn this past fall. Uh, the <laughs> interior elements were removed because our purpose for the barn is it will be have really three functions. It will act as an ancillary gallery for us. So some of the large signs that we have, as well as farm implements that really, really tell the story of 300 years of Northampton's history will be on display and they'll be dramatically lit. And it's a it's a timber frame building. So I don't think any of you have been inside the barn, but it's a, it's a really terrific space and it has a, a lot of history in and of itself in addition to these artifacts. So part of it will be an ancillary uh, exhibit space for us. It'll also function as a community gathering space. We'll have two ADA bathrooms and a small kitchenette that we'll be able to close off in the front. So if there are community events, whether they're um, things that we're sponsoring or something that the Ward 3 Association or Bridge Street School, the, the people will have, we can provide access to ADA bathrooms and everything will be fully 100% accessible. So in this, in this drawing, you see uh, kind of two views. Um, here's the L, the existing L, which is you see here in an older photograph. Um, this is currently what it looks like. Um, this is where the two bathrooms and kitchenette will be. And then this is on the rear, this is the shed style addition in the, which is the focus of this application. And that space will be used for two functions. It will enable us to store things like all the chairs and the AV equipment and theater equipment on one side. And then the other side will be a space, a, a, a green room for artists and musicians and spoken word. And it will really be a, a, a space uh, dedicated for, for that use. And, and the barn is small. It's, it's sort of basically 30 by 40. So our, it will be a small intimate space with a maximum capacity of, of 50 people. So um, here, here is the whole kind of bells and whistles um, the, here's the core of the barn, the L where the two bathrooms would be here and here, the little kitchenette. Um, and then here's, here's the shed style addition out, out back. And then this is the area of encroachment. And so uh, the, the barn, when it was moved here sometime in the 1800s was, was plunked pretty much smack very close to smack dab on the property line with 82 Bridge Street. And at, at that point, 82 was the parsonage for the city of Northampton. Um, so right, right here, we are um, right here, we're a foot off, a little more than a foot off the property line. And back here, we're three and a half feet off the property line. So here's a close up this shed style addition, like the L, which will be reconstructed, will be a new timber frame space. And here's, here's the property line. 
and the three and a half, a little extra, uh, three and five and a quarter. Um, and then, so we'll be in this area by one, one foot six and three quarters, and then this two foot seven inches. And then after this corner pin, the property opens up and, and we're no longer in non-compliance. Um, and we, we explored, so yeah, here, here are the distances um, and for, for, for that square footage. And so we, we explored options once we knew that we would be within this five foot setback. Um, and we went through a series of you know, questions in terms of making modifications to that shed style addition. And one was to have, right now there's an existing sliding door in the barn and that will be restored. <laughs> and it turns out that the length of the shed style addition on that side of the building is exactly what we need. And so we could have swing doors, but then that would compromise uh, ADA issues and moving in and out of those two spaces in the shed style addition, the green room and the storage area. And it would, one of our goals, yes, it's a, a, a reuse, but Preserving that historic door is a, is a priority for us. The other thing is we thought, okay, well, we could have, we could change the sliding door um, and make it a three quarter sliding door and then have a, a, a person door um, that would open in the other direction. But again, you know, there's the historic piece and then it complicates the construction, it makes pocket doors on both sides. It, it's just uh, more complicated. And then um, fi finally, there's, there was like, well, we could move the shed. We could change the dimensions of this shed style addition and kind of cut in that two foot, that, that distance. And then um, rather it's not supposed to say two foot, six inches, it's supposed to say one foot, six inches, and then go back, then go back out. But I think you can see that that would um, really complicate uh, complicate things and make it more expensive for the foundation. And it, it's it's hard to see what what I mean. We would be in compliance, but um, it's hopefully uh, since the criterion is um, not detrimental to the neighborhood and as a pre-existing non-conforming structure. So this is this is our this is our property here, 66. To, to tell you the truth, this, these um, lot lines is, are, are, not, are not accurate. The, the lot line is a little bit uh, further on our direction as you, here's the edge of the barn. So um, this is that shed, garden shed, the barn. Um, and so this is the, where the shed, the new shed would be. Um, and then just a, a little bit closer look is it, it would be be right here. Um, this this shows you one of the things I wanted to show in this is this is the parking lot for behind the Bridge Street School that has this chain link fence, and then this piece right here is this eight foot fence owned by our neighbor uh, our neighbor here at seventy four Bridge Street. Um, I think in my document I say 82, but it's supposed to say 74. And I did get a message from Todd Marchevka tonight, who he said, mention my name, they know me there. Um, and he is in full support of our project. And we've also heard from um, one of the residents uh, at this building. And then similarly, we heard, um, I think you received a letter, uh, Carolyn, from Quaverly Rothenberg, who lives on Graves and um, is also in, in support of the project. So I, I hope, I hope um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Any questions from the board? I have no questions. That's one of the best presentations I've seen, even from my assistant engineer. Hmm. Well, thank you. Explained it quite nicely and delineated it precisely. Any other comments or questions? 
No. Uh, just yes, just to confirm was, that we yes. got the uh, that that we did get the letter from Quaverly Rothenberg. So yeah, we have that. Thanks. Sorry, Maureen. <laughs> no, <laughs> fighting with my microphone. <laughs> any um, any advanced questions? I think were clarified in your presentation. I really appreciate the thoroughness of it. Oh well, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Thank you. Excellent presentation um, and phenomenal cause in my personal opinion. I mean, I just, I, this is so exciting to the restoration of this historically significant part. And I agree completely that it would be an absurdity to, to have to do backflips to, uh, to uh, configure uh, the structure in such a way to avoid this uh, negligible encroachment in, in my opinion. Um, are we ready to have a motion uh, to close the public hearing? And once that's uh, approved, we cannot have any more input from the applicant. Oh, Carolyn, we I still do have see no somebody member. else on. I was gonna say, on, is there yeah. a member of the public present? Carolyn, you're muted. You're muted, Carolyn. Nobody wants to, no one's raising their hand. Okay. okay. So you're okay. good. So motion to close the meeting. Okay, second. Second. And a roll call since we're virtual, please, Carolyn. Um, Elizabeth Silver. Yes. Sarah Northrup. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, and now a motion. Do we have a motion on the request for the finding? I'll move that we grant the finding as presented. Second. Okay. And um, for discussion, I just want to point out, I think what we are all thinking but haven't explicitly stated, and that is, speaking for myself, uh, this, to me, this presentation or this proposal um, in terms of the alteration or expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming structure, to me, is clearly not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. And that is the the standard as the applicant mentioned that we apply in determining if we're going to grant a finding. So uh, with that said, um, I guess, Carolyn, could we have a, a roll call vote on the uh, uh, motion to grant the uh, request for the finding? Yeah, uh, Sarah Northrup? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes, that's unanimous, congratulations. Yes, we're very excited about this. So thank you for doing it. We are. We'll Thank all you, benefit. Please. Thank you. Well, we're really, we're really, really excited. Thank you so much. And um, so this good news caps uh, more good news that we received today, which is we just got notification from the Massachusetts Cultural Council that we received a $106,000 award. So we are three for three in three weeks. We wow. received 173000 from the CPA, which has been our biggest source of support. We received $40,000 from the Beverage Family Foundation and That's today. Great. So these are these are three grants that we wrote in like three weeks, basically, in, in <laughs> January, and they've all come in. And, um, and this is great. So thank you. Yeah. I just have a question with a finding. Is there an appeal period time? Yes. Yeah, it's 20, it's yeah. It's 20 days after the decision is sent to the clerk. I'll let you know as soon as I get it there and that it'll, it'll have the date on the appeal and then you can pick it up okay. and record it. And, and is that something we record at the registry? Yep. Great. Yeah. Just, well, just like you. other permits. Great. Well, thank you all so much. I, I, yeah. as, a, as a fellow ZBA person, yeah. I, I understand some of the, uh, what happens. For you and so well, you know, this, this kudos kind of to you for one. carrying that mantle <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you all right well thank you all so much have a good night yeah. all right yeah. thanks um Bye. i don't think we have any um minutes so if, if uh, is there any other business or yeah. we've, we've got those bylaws so there's two oh. things yeah the bylaws which uh, maureen sent me some edits that were great very um detailed in the weeds comments that, um, you know, it's great to have another set of eyes on those. And um, so I've made changes. I didn't have a chance. I'm sorry to send you those. Um, 
uh, they were grammatical changes, typos, and then, um, you know, clarifications, basically. So if you want another round to look at it based on Maureen's changes, I'd be happy to send those out to you and we can do it next time. We don't have a meeting on the 26th of May. I think I may have relayed that to you. So the next possible meeting would be June 9th. And again, there's no real hurry for this. So it's not like, you know, you have to do it by time certain. We just want to wrap it up. I, I did go through them, Carolyn, and I had a couple of quick things. So is it all right to raise them now? Sure. Or do yeah. you not want me to? No, um, I can, I have it on the screen here just in case you wanted to discuss me, it. Oh yeah, okay. Um, there are two very, very little things. One okay. is in section 1.6, uh, number seven. It talked about postponing hearings and it said, as long as it's done by, to a date certain. Um, <laughs> I know that we have continued things without date certain in the past. So I was just a little curious about that language. So first, let me say Maureen pointed to that um, section precisely to ask about um, clarifying the language because it was a little confusing. So I did reword it. Rarely do you not continue to a specific date and time. But that's right. But um, we, there have been times. When that happens, is we're obligated to mail out new notice. That's all that means. Okay. Is that if you if you continue to a certain day and time, then that's considered procedurally the appro appropriate public notice. If you don't, then the onus is on the city to re-notify all the abutters and also repost it in the Gazette. Okay. Ah, should that be explicitly stated then as an alternative procedure to st uh, stating a time, place, and date certain? Because this would imply that we're not supposed to do that, even though in practice, I guess we have that alternative procedure. I can add that and add it to the list of changes to resend to you. Yeah, um, I, th I think it makes sense if, in fact, that is an option available to us, because this language suggests that we can't do that. And it, it says we can only postpone or continue to mm -hmm. a time date, certainly. Yeah. Does it say okay. we can vote? Yeah, it says may vote to close, postpone, and continue. But it's close. Can we vote on the application? Um, so actually, I need to reword all of this because it's trying to merge everything into one. So at any point, you can either close the hearing, postpone mm -hmm. it, or continue it. So you're obviously not going to put a specific time and place if you're closing the hearing. So I think I might break this up into two points anyway. Okay. Um, so okay. I'll, I'll do, I'll rework that and send it. So I okay. appreciate that um, And then close the, evaluation. Yeah, then the, the one other little thing was in, um, I think it's section 1.11, it referred to a vice chair. Do we have a vice chair? Sarah. Oh, okay. Good. I don't know that we've technically um, the longest term, but. Uh, no, good to know. I'm, no. That's yeah, all. So, uh, David and I have traded places a couple times, but um, I'm, I'm not uh, tied to any title. Yeah, no, we no, can no, also I do another vote. I mean, usually the boards do it every year. This has been, you know, the last two years. We don't need another vote. Uh -uh. No, we're, we're good. We're really good. I didn't want to stir up anything. I was just curious. I'm happy to step down. I no, I no, 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 no. I sense a coup coming. No, no. It's, it's okay. I will welcome it. You can disregard. Um, don't, you heard nothing, David. Depose me. Uh, I'm also uh, willing to continue to serve. Good. Um, I had a question on um, section 1.4. It refers to, um, let's see, uh, amendment shall have been proposed at a regular meeting immediately preceding that during which a vote is taken. So, uh, immediate, an, an immediate, a meeting that was immediately preceding, or the amendment, the proposal has to be within the same meeting immediately preceding. 
What section are you in, Sarah? 1.4. One, 1. It's, it's for a... amendments and adopting these bylaws. So it, it's supposed to be, well, I think the way that it would read is um, you review them at one meeting and the very next meeting is when you take the vote. Uh, so and, what immediately made me think it was during the same meeting. Oh, it's supposed to go to preceding, immediately preceding that during which it, oh, so meaning preceding it's the, that, and I, I can clarify that too. Would help. So but, it might be um, more clarified if you changed the word of uh, before regular to the, I mean, that might clarify. Oh, regular meeting, yes. That Rather than mean. any old regular meeting. Okay. And by regular, we mean public? Yes, it has to be posted on, yes, right. it, it has to be a meeting that's posted. Welcome to a bunch of lawyers, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> okay. Does that suggest, uh, the suggestion I heard makes sense that proposed at the regular meeting immediately proceeding instead of a regular meeting? I don't know if it clarifies it more, but it, it, well, it's interesting. Well, no, I'm, I'm suggesting it does, but go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, I had a say, I had a question about that um, section that was just simply to make sure whatever we were saying made it clear that the public would be notified that we were about to consider amending our bylaws. So as long as regular means it's a posted meeting, which it does, it means yeah. the public you know, they're not notified about this, but they have the opportunity to find out that we will be potentially amending our bylaws. Well, they're notified right. through the agenda. If they look right. at the agenda, it will be on it. Right. right. It's not, it has to know, be on an agenda. Yep. It's, it's pull, it's not push in terms of communications. It's not like people have to go looking for this. So I had a, I had a question about that, just in fact, in terms of what level of say do we have about changing these without the public having an opportunity to know that they might change in a way that impacts the community in their opinion yeah right mm. well i think carolyn said it would be on the agenda so that is public notice right it is public notice yeah no. and also I kind of feel that I'm going to make a joke here. I feel sorry for anyone who's who, <laughs> whose life is so sad that they, <laughs> they want to get in. They want to argue, but but uh, oh, now I'm wasting our time. So, um, but but it is it is published, right? So people do have technically yep. there is public yep. notice. Yep. Yep. It could be that the message um, that I, I what I had what was um, coming to mind was the parallel notice Carolyn shared with us about the um, new committee looking into maybe opportunities for more of the public to participate on boards that um, I think it's very valuable for us to all keep that in mind to make sure that um, there is this subcommittee that two city councilors I believe have brought forward or just um, started uh, crafting that uh, provides that that just looks at the ways uh, the wider community can be involved in boards and committees on a city level. Right, just because I've been willing to uh, volunteer for whatever it's been, 23 years or something, doesn't mean that I won't, you know, get out of the way and let someone else do it. But there just seems to be a chronic shortage of people willing to volunteer. And I think that's sort of the, the city council is trying to figure out a way to expand the pool, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now, one more question on this, uh, um, on your draft. Um, section 1.13, Employment of Outside Consultants. Um, it lists zoning, planning, and conservation commissions might hire outside consultants. Would that also apply to architecture, uh, history, uh, historical, excuse me, uh, or any board, or just these three boards? Um, it's just, uh, well, at this point, it's just these 
it could be any board really, but um, that's typically what happens. Historical commission, they can contract, they, you know, if they spend money and they're high, they just hired a consultant to help them do a plan, but it's really about the permitting hat um, if there's additional technical assistance. Okay, and uh, my last question then, it, later in that paragraph, it then lists the Mass General Law section um, does the list then review fee may be imposed only if one through eight, uh, et cetera. Um, is that basically just straight out of the mass general law? That's those bullets yeah. one through eight and then yeah. more. Yeah. You could just cite it if you wanted. Yeah, I think it's clearer though. So people, especially applicants, and they can that's true. That I don't think you've adopted for it. this. Yeah. Yep. So, was there going to be uh, additional sections for other boards? Um, um, there's a section three for zoning, section two for planning. Not right. a section. So the only other two would be central business architecture. Um, and we do that, we would do that separately in historical commission. But they have sim they have different sort of procedures. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So you'll recirculate and then make them we've now procedurally we can vote at the next uh, meeting. Right. And 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 I just want to make sure I had that date in my calendar, Carolyn, for in June, the June meeting. June 9th. Um, I don't know that, I can't remember if we have a permit yet for, oh, I think we are going to have a permit for that, but it'd be June 9th. Okay, thank you. I can tell you now I won't be here for the June 23rd meeting, if there is okay. one. Um, and I'm going to try to hold that off anyway, because I'm not going to be here. Oh, okay. But I could potentially do it by Zoom if we had a, a permit. Yeah, I won't be able to. Um, so it, did we come up with dates for July and August? So it looks like July 28th was a winner and potentially, I'm sorry, July 7th, 28th and August 25th had more people. So we had three for the 28th and then I didn't see anything back from you, David. So I didn't know if any of those dates were. Uh, the 28th, if all goes well, I'm going to be in London with my daughter for the first time in two and a half years. Okay. And um, well, we have three people for okay. the 28th, so. Okay, and then what was the August date? 25th. That should be fine. I'm gonna pencil it in, that should be fine. Okay. Are we um, obligated to meet on the, one of the Thursdays that we normally would be meeting? No, you can meet another time. You can meet anytime you want. <laughs> Yeah, it's well, just, um, in August, I'm available two of the weeks that we wouldn't normally meet and the two weeks that we would normally meet, I'm not available, so. Well, we can also that. play it by ear and if nothing's coming in and there's no meeting, then we won't reschedule. Um, and then if there is, of course, you can just decide that you want to meet a different day. Okay. So for the moment, we have a date, one day in June, we have one day in July, and one day in August. And that yes. could cover us? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you've got your you know, required three for each of those? Yes. Okay. okay. Motion to adjourn? Second. Okay. And roll call, please. Uh, Elizabeth Silver? Yes. Uh, Sarah Northup? Yes. David Bloomberg. Yes, that's unanimous. Thank Great. you, everybody. Happy spring. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.